Hi everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at Azure Cosmos DB and Azure Functions in order to create event-driven serverless applications that have low latency access to your data. Cosmos DB is a globally distributed multi-model database service. It also provides APIs for SQL, MongoDB, Cassandra Gremlins, so you can use those APIs to access your data. I can also add that there is now a free tier so that's pretty generous and you can actually use it to create very small like production apps. Uh, so that's very cool. Why would you want to use something like Cosmos? Well, of course, global distribution, you can add or remove any of the Azure regions at any time inside of your Cosmos account. You have 99.999% high availability for both read and writes. The database engine is fully schema agnostic and a bunch of other benefits. Now, keep in mind that the Azure Functions triggers, input binding, and output binding for Cosmos DB is only available at the moment for the SQL API, which is what we're going to be using in this demo. If you wanna use any of the other APIs, you'll just have to use their static clients um, inside of your Azure function. Let's move over to the portal. Let's create a new Cosmos account on the free tier and let's uh, create a database, some documents, some items. We'll do some queries and then we'll move into visual code and actually see how the trigger input binding and output bindings work. All right, so our resource has created. Now we can go ahead and click into the resource in, in your left panel. You can click on data explorer and this is how we interact with our Cosmos account via the Azure portal. We'll first create a new database and I'm gonna call this to do items, items. Perfect. And we can leave the throughput as is and hit okay. Inside of our database, we're then going to create a new container and make sure your database ID is just selected to the to do items database that we just created. And we can call this items and partition key. If you want to be able to partition your data across multiple containers, you can use a partition key. So I'm just going to use category category as a partition key and the rest I can hit. Okay. So every Azure account I believe can have up to a hundred database accounts, but only one can be on the free tier. Within each database account, you can have multiple databases and within each database, you can have multiple containers and within with each container, you can have multiple items. Now your container will have, depending on which API, you'll have multiple collections, you'll have multiple tables, multiple graphs. And within each one of those, you know, you'll have multiple documents, multiple rows, multiple nodes, etc. So it really depends on which API you have. All right, so we can extend or expand to do items or database. And then inside of our items, we can collect items and we see we don't have any. And that's of course, because we haven't created any. So let's do that now. Let's hit new item and let's replace this. So you see now we have these three items in here, you click on them and you'll see, obviously the content that they have. Now these are each called items are called documents and each document is just JSON content, right? So if we go to right click on here and then we can do a new SQL query. If you do select all from C, which is just the default query that they give you, you execute that. It'll return all your documents. Actually, let's do select C dot just the category because we only want to see category C dot category from items as C that should give us all the categories that we have. Well, all the items, each cat, each item, but just their categories. If we wanted to see just the different categories, we could do distinct. Did I spell that right? No, I did not. This, there we go. And these will show us a different one. So chores and YouTube. That's pretty much how we would work inside of the portal. But the fun part really comes when we start using Azure Functions. So let's dive into first using the Azure Functions Cosmos DB trigger. Okay, so I'm, I am in a brand new visual code project and I'm gonna select the Azure button 
the Azure extension on the left and create a new functions project and just select the current directory that I'm in. I'll be using C sharp and we can select the Cosmos DB trigger. And that name is fine. That namespace is fine. We'll create a new local app setting for that and select database account. Now, since we created a new Cosmos database account in the portal before opening this up, it's gonna preload that account for us here. So we're gonna select that. And in the database name, we're just gonna provide the name of the database that we created, which is to do items. And the collection that we wanna be monitored is just items. Now we'll go back to the portal and I'll just show you how those things map. So the, again, database that we're monitoring is the to do items and the container slash collection that we are monitoring is the items. So you can see that the template creates a lot of, a, a lot of it for us. Oh, hold on. You know what? Yeah, I knew it. I knew we were going to get this error because I forgot to include the, I think it's create least collection if does not exist and set this to true. I wonder if it'll fix it or if I have to do it all over again. I hope not. Great, so it looks like it is listening now. So if we go to the portal so here and then we'll go into items, uh, items and then let's create a new item. And we'll hit save. As soon as we hit save, if we go back to visual code, you'll see that documents modified one and the first document ID is four, which is the one that we just created. So that's really how the trigger works. It's just listening to changes to inserts and modifications, but it currently does not listen to deletions. So keep that in mind. Let's now take a look at how you would use the input binding. So we're going to stop this. In order to use the input binding, we could create a, a new HTTP trigger. So let's go into here and then just create another function. We'll select HTTP trigger. That HTTP trigger is fine, that name. Okay, so we're inside of the HTTP trigger. Before I edit this method, I'm going to just create a class to describe the item. There we go. So let's save that. Okay, so let's add our Cosmos DB input binding. Uh, we need to provide some information here. So let's give ourselves some space. Okay, and I know we also need to provide the connection string setting, which if you created you, the project using Visual Code, the Cosmos DB trigger template, then you'll have it inside of here. And then you can just copy that setting the query that's going to be used to get the id which is just query.id and then the same query that is going to be used for the partition key which is query dot category oh i forgot curly brackets all right, I think that's all we need. Yes, so now we close, let's get rid of this empty space here. We close that and then we'll just say that this is actually going to be a, uh, assigned to a to-do item object, which is what we created down here, to-do item, comma, because we have the iLogger down here. What we're going to create now is we can provide a request via HTTP that will have an ID and a category and will be returned an item from our Cosmos DB collection if it matches those parameters. If to do item is not, no, actually just say is null, ah, is null, then we can just return new, not found, not found a result. Yes, there we go. Excellent. And then otherwise we can just say return new. Yes, to do, to do, to do item. Perfect. And let's go into edge and create. There we go. You can see that the ID is one. The category is chores. The name is do laundry and the description is make sure to fold right away. If we go into our account, we select that same item you see that that matches. So that's how you would use the input binding. Finally, let's take a look at how we can use the Cosmos DB output binding for Azure Functions. Let's create a new function 
and we'll make sure to utilize the Q trigger. We'll use all the default and we'll make sure we use a storage account that has the cue that we want to listen to. I've already created it. I believe it's called to do. All right, we've created a new function that utilizes the cue trigger. Now let's go ahead and edit. We're gonna need the Cosmos output binding. It's going to be out dynamic document. Perfect comma, all right, great. Now let's go inside of here and we can simply say that document document. Well, all we're going to really do is once there's a new message, we're going to grab that message and whatever the message is, we'll set that to the description of the item. And then the ID will be some random ID. Of course, there are other attributes for our to do item, but to keep it as simple as possible, we'll just use these here run here. All right. So if we go into our queue, add a message, we'll just say buy shoes and we'll hit. Okay. It already got DQ'd. That was quite quick. And you see documents modified and the ID is some random one that we set using this method here. If we go into our Cosmos account and hit refresh, you're going to see this really long one here and then description just says buy shoes. And there you have it. That is it for the demo for this video. If you have any questions, suggestions, recommendations, complaints, feel free to leave them in the comment box or hit me up on Twitter at made by GPS on Instagram at made by GPS. The next video is going to be about IT certifications, which I am actually a pretty big fan of. If you watched my previous video, the how to become a cloud engineer in 2020. Uh, so yeah, you can expect that sometime next week and thank you for watching and I will see you next week.